Hello everyone. I have a Bosch tankless water heater that was spitting out first a C1 code and then a C2 code for flu blockage. And if you look right here, there you go. Flu blockage detected during startup due to insufficient combustion air. So it has a bunch of troubleshooting steps about checking for restrictions. Well, there's my pipes. They're not restricted. They go up. My problem, I know, because it happened once before, is I finished my basement. And these seals right here, even though they're supposed to suck air down through into the box right here and then push it down through the heater, is the seals aren't that great. You can see dust. And it actually, especially with all this drywall sanding, it just sucked dust into here. And I should have tried to cl tighten that up and or tape it or something, but we didn't end up doing that. So now all said and done, my heater, water heater stopped working. So first of all, I went through and pulled all the sensors that I could find. And this actually, the heating element wasn't really that bad. But so I finally, so I pulled off the gas, um, I know it's called manifold here that inputs all the gas. Um, and then this guy right here sits on top of that and I'll show you after I get it all put back together. But what I just barely found right here on the bottom, there's a bit of a screen. So when you flip that bad boy over, you can see how plugged, see this one right here doesn't look too bad, but then all the other holes are completely plugged off. So I am going to clean that, put it back together, and I'm pretty confident that will fix my problem. And we will go from there. Hopefully I prove to be right on this one because my wife needs to take a shower. So I just blew it out and you can see we are much better. So we'll put her back together and see how it goes. Try to document a few things as far as disassembly. So this screen is held on by the screws. Um, then I'll put this device back in place. I don't even know what this thing is. I think it's just more of a manifold for the gas to flow through and get it oriented right before it goes into combustion chamber. And yeah, then that'll go on top. There's four screws in the back. This one's a pain in the butt because you have this computer in the way when you're trying to get a, I, I had socket and for, they're all torque screws. I had socket and extensions. If you had a different style of torques, it might be a little easier, which I do have out in my garage. So I might try that going back together. So yeah, four screws in the back. This one's a pain too, because you got the, the exhaust manifold right here. It's in the way a little bit, so you gotta fight with that, but you can get it off without having to pull all this apart, so. All right, to remove this manifold, there's two screws on this mounting bracket. This is, once you hook all this all this together, this mounting bracket is the top that holds everything in place. And then there's a couple at the bottom, but there's, there's one right here that has two screws. One right there that has two screws. And there's one, two, three, four across the front and on the back. So you pull those out and this thing just pulls right on out. And this hose goes, this hose right here goes on the manifold that I've already pulled off right there. So, yep. Okay, so my video went a little backwards here, but I have fixed the water heater. It is now working. Let's see on the display. Everything, this has a recirculation pump on it too, and that's working just fine. So to pull this apart, one screw, under that screw, unplug that connector and the motor will come out, the fan motor. And you want to undo this plug and this plug. Then there's four screws, one, two, three, and four. And there, I guess there's a fifth screw here that retains this gas pipe. So you pull all five of those screws out and this whole manifold will swing out and then you just work it up off. There's an O-ring up in here. Once you pull that manifold off, then what I mentioned before, 
pull these screws out, all eight screws, and pull out that uh, secondary manifold. And then that gets you access to the screen. So it looks like I got fire in there, so everything's going good. I have a um, CO2 detector that I'm gonna, carbon monoxide detector, I'm gonna check it with to make sure that I don't have any leaks, but other than that, everything's going fine. I guess that's the one thing I would mention is there's a reason they tell you to use a certified technician because this does have gas. So I think the, the biggest thing to be aware of is this connection, right? This connection right here, there's a gasket. And then when the gas air mixture flows past this gasket right there, so make sure all those gas, gaskets are good and you put them back together or you will end up having a leak.